Although I love sport bikes, my biggest pet peeve is having to maintain that damn chain every three to 500 miles. I absolutely hate cleaning and lubing that chain so often. It sucks, but you know what? You have to do it because you don't want to have a rusty chain and have to replace the chain and sprockets often. And you don't want your bike, you know, running bad and getting bad fuel efficiency. So you have to do it and it sucks. Absolutely hate buying those cans of lube and chain cleaner, which are hard to come by around where I live, and it's like six or seven dollars a can when you do find them, and it sucks. In this video, I'm going to compare and contrast the difference between a chain driven motorcycle versus a belt and shaft driven motorcycle. Let's go for a ride! <laughs> This is the best helmet I've ever owned. Ultra lightweight carbon fiber helmet with auto tint shield. My motor vlog camera airbag vest to help keep me safe. I have links to all of my gear in the description and comment section of this video. We'll start with the chain drive first, which are on most motorcycles, including most sport bikes, nearly all dirt bikes, some cruisers, some sport touring bikes. Really, it's the most economical way to transfer power to the rear wheel because they only experience a 3% power loss. However, chains require the most maintenance. You have to maintain it every three to 500 miles. Also, you have to replace the chain and sprockets at least every 30,000 miles. Its chains are not as smooth as a belt-driven or shaft-driven motorcycle. It's the noisiest of the three options. Also, the wheels require alignment, unlike a shaft-driven motorcycle. And also, it can pose a safety risk if the chain chews up a sprocket, resulting in a rear tire lockup, which can set you up for real up day. Uh oh. Oh man. As you can see, the teeth grind it. Look at the drive shaft. The teeth are ground down. Dude, that's bad news. It's going to cost me over $1,000 to get this fixed. Okay, now let's switch to a belt drive system, which are seen on most cruisers and some sport bikes, such as the Buell 1125R and the BMW F800S, and a few others, of course. And power loss at the rear wheel is only about 11%. That's 20% less power loss compared to a shaft driven bike, but about 8% increase in power loss compared to a chain driven motorcycle. Also, belt drives require much less maintenance than a chain because a belt doesn't require degreasing or lubrication such as a chain and that'll save you money from having to buy cans of lube and cleaner. Also, service intervals are every 15 to 20,000 miles unlike a chain which requires maintenance every three to 600 miles. Also, a Kevlar reinforced belt can last up to 50 to 100,000 miles if you care for it properly which doubles a chain's life. However, belt replacement is much more expensive, which is usually around $350 for belt replacement. However, you can usually reuse the pulleys. Another important point is that a belt is much safer than a chain, most of the time at least, because if a belt breaks, the rear wheel will just free wheel, which means less chance of you having a real f***ed up day. Also, a belt is much smoother and more quiet than a chain, and it's cleaner and lighter in weight than a chain or shaft drive for that matter. But it's not as durable as a chain when subjected to very high horsepower engines, especially when drag racing. Oh, baby! Ah! After having owned a belt-driven Ducati X Diablo S with over 155 horsepower, 90 pounds feet of torque, I often ripped the throttle to fast starts and I never had a problem with the belt until rocks started hitting up underneath the belt guard and it caused damage to that so-called bulletproof Kevlar belt and Ducati wanted to charge me over $700 to replace that belt. So keep that in mind before you buy either a Harley Davidson or a fancy European cruiser with a belt drive system because it could be really expensive to replace that belt. And there's no fixing a belt on the side of the road like you can with a chain sometimes. Okay, last but not least, the shaft drive, which can be seen on cruisers such as the Suzuki Boulevard M109R and some sport touring bikes such as the Honda VFR 1200 and the BMW K1300S and on a rare sport bike such as the older Moto Guzzi V11. The shaft drive technology is the same technology used in cars and as far as power loss it's about 31% at the rear wheel which is the highest power loss compared to the belt and chain drives and the power loss is because of the extra gears in the shaft. 
As far as maintenance is concerned, it has the least amount of required maintenance compared to chain and belt drives. Only the shaft drive reservoir fluid needs to be replaced every time there's an oil change. However, if there is any damage at all, it's very expensive to replace the shaft drive, but as long as you take care of it, a shaft drive can last forever. Another benefit of a shaft drive is no wheel alignment is needed. Also, it runs quiet and clean, even cleaner than a belt or chain drive. As far as cons, the shaft drive is heavy and suspension quality suffers because of unsprung weight that the rear shock has to control. Also, the back tire can lock up if there is a problem, but that is pretty rare compared to a chain. And another con, the shaft drive creates torque rise by the rear wheel extending when power is applied. I have yet to ride or own a shaft driven motorcycle and I probably never will own one because a shaft drive adds so much weight to a motorcycle and I tend to stay away from heavy motorcycles. I like lightweight, torquey, hooligan machines like my custom 2019 YZ450 FX Supermoto that I made street legal, which by the way I did a full build series on and I have the video links in the description and comment section of this video. I'll tell you, 265 pounds, super torquey, the wheelie machine, you can throw it around, take it off road, ride it up staircases, oh my goodness, it's just so much fun and adrenaline rush every time I ride it. Uh, but I also love the lightweight sport bikes like the CBR 600 double R, CBR 1000 double R, the Aprilia Tuono, and all the other lightweight sport bikes. I'll tell you, a chain drive is my number one choice, to be honest with you. Yes, it does require a lot of maintenance, adjustment. Uh, you lube it all the time, but it's worth it. Because it has the least amount of power loss at the rear wheel. And if it snaps, sometimes you can repair it on the side of the road. But you cannot do that most of the time with a belt-driven motorcycle. Like that Ducati XD Avel S that I own. Which I'll tell you guys, that was a pretty sick bike, man. I did not really miss the sport bikes riding that bike. Because it had so much power. It never scraped pegs around corners. Oh, very comfortable, a very, very fun bike to ride, but that Kevlar belt, which is supposed to be bulletproof, got some serious damage on it, and a, a lot of people have had their belt snap on their XD Avail, and also Harley Davidson and all the other uh, cruisers out there with belt drives, and it can be quite expensive to replace that belt, like I said earlier in this video, for the Ducati XD Avail, was going to cost me $700, so keep that in mind, guys, if you think about getting you know, belt-driven cruiser because it may just leave you stranded on the side of the road and with a big repair bill when it's taken back to the shop. Uh, so leave a comment below, guys. What is your favorite type of drive on a motorcycle and why? Let's discuss. That's why I do these videos to help incite community discussion. I love talking about motorcycles with you guys. I love talking with you guys. I appreciate all you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my All of a Motorcycle channel and make sure to check out my other channel. Bug out moto deuces thumbs up check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel bug out moto where i customize a van for my motorcycle so i can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere subscribe to my youtube channel bug out moto